Wham! Bam! No, no, no! These are too expensive to wham bam. Okay, that's better. I'm starting to print with ASA and ABS again, and I'm getting really tired of messing around with adhesives. And I thought these wham bam PEX build plates may just be the answer. In this video, we're gonna get an idea of what's involved with mounting these to an Ender 3 version 2, and we're gonna do our first test runs to see how well they work right out of the gates. So, butter up your build plates and stick around. The Ender 3 version 2 is a bed slinger. It's important to keep the weight as low as possible on that Y axis, so all the parts are pretty thin, the support frame and the aluminum plate. And this plate isn't machined, so it's likely it's not very flat. So let's have a look to see how flat that plate is to start with. First we need to unscrew the bed levelers to return the plate to its resting shape. Yikes! With the plate taken off, we can have a look at how flat it is. I'm going to add some marker to make the high spot stand out a little bit better. There are a few things I'm curious about with these wham bams. I'd like to find out how flat the bed stays when it heats up, how long that PEX surface is really going to last. I assume it's not going to look great forever, but how long will it really last until I need to replace it? One or two years maybe? Do some filaments stick too well? I've read that PETG could be a problem. And can I get away without using a probe? I would really like to avoid using a probe if I can. Hopefully we can answer a few of these questions in this video. And my aluminum plate is not very flat. The two front corners seem to be raised quite a bit, with the right one being far more than the left, and the rest seems to be pretty well all right. I realize I don't have the best setup for sanding. Ideally, a piece of 400 grit adhered to a flat plate would be perfect, but I'll just make do with what I have around and keep checking as I go. What I've done is place doubled up cloths below for support, mainly so I can prevent damage to the heating mat. And this has taken a little while, but I've managed to get it flattened. I've used my one, two, three blocks and sanded diagonally in both directions and kept checking as I went. And that worked pretty well. So now this needs a thorough cleaning. I'm using alcohol and then I'm gonna follow up with some acetone. So there are four holes to contend with, and I don't think it's wise to cover them up. So I think we're just gonna stick it on and then deal with the holes afterward. Sticking this on is pretty simple, but we've only got one shot at it. Peeling just a small amount off the backer and just getting that back edge started, making sure to press from the inside, working my way out. After everything's been adhered, I'm gonna use a piece of thick paper to press down a little bit more firmly to make sure we have good contact everywhere. And this is starting to look really good, but now we have some holes to deal with. I'm gonna flip it over, drill those small holes to mark the centers first, and then come at it from the top with a larger drill bit to clear out most of the hole. The large bit doesn't really cut this material very well. I'm gonna to have to go back with a knife and carefully remove the leftover around each hole. What's important here is we don't leave any raised bits that would prevent the steel plate from meeting that magnet properly. And here we are and that finished off pretty nicely. Now it's just a matter of reinstalling the bed onto the printer. And if you do it the way I did, Expect to have to do it again because the bed heater cable support bracket needs to have the spring above it, not below it. And now to take everything off and then put it all back on properly. It is time to peel off that protection and see what we have. Oh, and that is just beautiful. So now we have to prep the surface 
and they provided triple aught steel wool. And if you've ever worked with steel wool before, you'll know that it makes a big mess of steel fibers everywhere. It's a good idea to keep this step away from your 3D printer. So we need to take that steel wool and some alcohol and scuff up the surface a little bit and a good clean afterward and we're ready to try and level the bed and see if we can print something. Oh yeah, we can't do that yet. To torture us a little bit, it says that full adhesion doesn't come until about 72 hours after application. I'm going to have to wait a little bit and come back. While we're waiting, did you notice that line in the thumbnail? That's for you to have some fun. You can use the comments to tell the rest of us what you think about these wham bams. But the trick is that it has to rhyme. Okay, finally I have some PLA to start. The wham bam instructions suggest a 70 degrees Celsius bed temperature for good stickability. I'm using a 1 millimeter nozzle to lay down a good amount of material with four walls, a 0.28 millimeter layer height, and I screwed up. I had my structural PETG settings with a 240 nozzle and no fan turned on. The print quality definitely suffered. But since we're testing stick and not looks, I think it's okay. I tried to remove the print without taking the plate off and just cooling the part quickly didn't work. The plate had to come off, but the stick was really good. So how about some PETG? Now this one says not to get too close to the bed because it may adhere too well. So let's do the same print, back off the bed just a little bit and give it a try. Now here the bed remains at 70 degrees Celsius. And again, I don't see any issues here, but PETG really isn't that hard to print. It just tends to be a bit stringy and saggy and so very, very shiny. How about we move on to a real test? This one is ASA. Normally it's printed in an enclosure, but I'm printing it in my workshop in the winter time and we're around 18 degrees Celsius here. For this print, we need a 110 degrees Celsius bed and the nozzle can be closer to the bed on this one for an average amount of squish. This print looks really good, but it did release on one side before the print finished. It wasn't a complete fail, but not perfection either. I know this isn't the way to print ASA. I will have to continue to test it in the coming weeks, but based off what I've seen so far, I don't think it's going to be a problem printing with it. So how about answering some of those questions? Does this plate stay flat at temperature? Mine does stay pretty flat, flat enough to print without a probe. As far as how long it's going to last, I'm really going to need to test this over the long term to find out. So far, what I've seen is some bubbles appearing in the surface after the print cools. It does seem to be related to warping of the parts as they pull up on that PEX. But once the bed heats up again, the bubbles seem to disappear. All of the filaments that I've tried so far seem to stick pretty well. One side benefit of the Wham Bam over the glass is that it is overall about 100 grams less than the glass with clips, which should mean that we should be able to reach higher speeds with this printer. I have to say I'm really liking the easy print removal. I'm just hoping that these will last to justify the price. If you guys would like to see more tests, please make sure to let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you found it helpful. And I will see you on the next one.